day 162, 1 Kings 5 through 6, and 2 Chronicles 2 through 3. This is just the word where we are reading chronologically through the Bible in a year. New King James Version, starting with 1 Kings chapter 5. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon because he had heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always loved David. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the wars which were fought against him on every side, until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adverse adversary nor evil occurrence. And behold, I propose to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spoke to my father David, saying, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, he shall build the house for my name. Now, therefore, command that they cut down cedars for me from Lebanon, and my servants will be with your servants, and I will pay you wages for your servants according to whatever you say. For you know there is none among us who has skill to cut timber like the Sidonians. So it was when Hiram heard the words of Solomon that he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, for he has given David a wise son over this great people. Then Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the message which you sent to me, and I will do all you desire concerning the cedar and cypress logs. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon to the sea. I will float them in rafts by sea to the place you indicate to me, and will have them broken apart there. Then you can take them away, and you shall fulfill my and you shall fulfill my desire by giving food for my household. Then Hiram gave Solomon cedars and cypress logs according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household and 20,000 cores of pressed oil. Thus Solomon gave to Hiram year by year. So the Lord gave Solomon wisdom and he had as he had promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon and the two of them made a treaty together. Then King Solomon raised up a labor force out of all Israel, and the labor force was 30,000 men, and he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month in ships. They were one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the labor, labor force. Solomon had 70,000 who carried burdens and 80,000 who quarried stones in the mountains. Besides 3,300 from the chiefs of Solomon's deputies who supervised the people who labored in the work. And the king commanded them to quarry large stones, costly stones, and hewn stones to lay the foundation of the temple. So Solomon's builders, Hiram's builders, and the Gebelites quarried them. And they prepared timber and stones to build the temple. Chapter 6. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Viv, Viz, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. Now, the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, its length was 60 cubits, its width was 20, its height 30 cubits. The vestibule in front of the sanctuary of the house was 20 cubits long across the width of the house, and the width of the vestibule extended 10 cubits from the front of the house. And he made for the house windows with beveled frames. Against the wall of the temple, he built chambers all around. Against the walls of the temple, all around the sanctuary and the inner sanctuary. Thus he made side chambers all around it. The lowest chamber was five cubits wide, the middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide. 
for he made narrow ledges around the outside of the temple so that the support beams would not be fastened into the walls of the temple. And the temple, when it was being built, was built with stone finished at the quarry so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. The doorway for the middle story was on the right side of the temple. They went up by stairs to the middle story and from the middle to the third. So he built the temple and finished it, and he paneled the temple with beams and boards of cedar. And he built side chambers against the entire temple, each five cubits high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams. Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you, which I spoke to your father David." And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. And he built the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards from the floor of the temple to the ceiling. He paneled the inside with wood and he covered the floor of the temple with planks of cypress. Then he built the 20 cubit room at the rear of the temple from floor to ceiling with cedar boards. He built it inside as the inner sanctuary, as the most holy place. And in front of it, the temple sanctuary was 40 cubits long. The inside of the temple was cedar, carved with ornamental buds and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. And he prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold and overlaid the altar of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. He stretched gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary and overlaid it with gold. The whole temple he overlaid with gold until he had finished all the temple. Also, he overlaid with gold the entire altar that was by the inner sanctuary. Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood, each 10 cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits and the other wing of the cherub with five cubits, ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other, and the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherub were on the same size, were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cherub. Then he set the cherub inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherub so that the wing of one touched one wall and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall and their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. Also, he overlaid the cherub with gold. Then he carved all the walls of the temple all around both the inner and outer sanctuaries with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees and open flowers. And the floor of the temple he overlaid with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and doorpost were one-fifth of the wall. The doors were of olive wood, and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold. And he spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So for the door of the sanctuary, he also made doorpost of olive wood, one fourth of the wall. And the two doors were of cypress wood, two panels comprised of one folding door and two panels comprised of comprised the other folding door. Then he carved cherubim, palm trees and open flowers on them and overlaid them with gold applied evenly on the carved work, and he built the inner court with three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year, the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid in the month of Ziv, and in the eleventh year, in the month of Bul, which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its detail and according to all its plans. So he was seven years in building second chronicles 2 
Then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal house for himself. Solomon selected 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 to quarry stones in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Then Solomon sent to, sent to Hiram, king of Tyre, saying, As you have dealt with David my father, and sent him cedars to build himself a house to dwell in, so dwell with me. Behold, I am building a temple for the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him sweet incense for the continual showbread, for the burnt offerings, mornings, and evenings on the Sabbath, on the new moons, and on the set feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the temple which I build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a temple since heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a temple except to burn sacrifice before him? Therefore send me at once a man skillful to work in gold and silver and bronze and iron and purple and crimson and blue. So who has skill to engrave with the skillful men who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Also send me cedar and cypress, algum logs from Lebanon, for I know that your servants have skill to cut timber in Lebanon. And indeed, my servants will be with your servants to prepare timber for me in abundance. For the temple which I am about to build shall be great and wonderful. And indeed, I will give to your servants the woodsmen who cut timber, 20,000 cores of ground wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Then Hiram king of Tyre answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Hiram also said, because, I'm sorry, Hiram also said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, for he has given King David a wise son, endowed with prudence and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal house for himself. And now I have sent a skillful man, endowed with understanding, Huram, my master craftsman, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skilled to work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, stone and wood, purple and blue, fine linen and crimson, and to make any engraving and to accomplish any plan which may be given to him with your skillful men and with the skillful men of my Lord David your father. Now therefore the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my Lord has spoken of, let him send to his servants, and we will cut wood from Lebanon as much as you need. We will bring it to you in rafts by sea to Joppa, and you will carry it to Jerusalem. Then Solomon numbered all the aliens who were in the land of Israel, after the census in which David his father had numbered them, and there were found to be 153,600, and he made 70,000 of them bearers of burdens, 80,000 stone cutters in the mountains, and 3,600 overseers to make the people work. Chapter 3. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for building the house of God. The length was 60 cubits by cubits according to the former measure, and the width twenty cubits. And the vestibule that was in front of the sanctuary was twenty cubits long across the width of the house, and the height was one hundred and twenty. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. The larger room he paneled with cypress, which he overlaid with fine gold, and he carved palm trees and cane work on it. And he decorated the house with precious stones for beauty, and the gold was gold from Parvam. He also overlaid the house, the beams and doorposts, its walls and doors with gold, and he carved cherubims on the wall, and he made the most holy place. Its length was according to the width of the house, twenty cubits, its width twenty cubits. He overlaid it with six hundred latins of fine gold, talents of fine gold. The weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold, and he overlaid the upper area with gold. In the most holy place, he made two cherubims fashioned by carving and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were 20 cubits in, in overall length, 
one wing of the one cherubim was five cubits touching the wall of the room and the other wing was five cubits touching the wing of the other cherub the one wing of the other cherub was five cubits touching the wall of the room and the other wing also was five cubits touching the wing of the other cherub the wings of these cherubs spanned 20 cubits overall they stood on their feet and they faced inward and he made the veil of blue purple crimson and fine linen and woven cherub into them also he made in front of the temple two pillars 35 cubits high and the capital that was on top of each of them was five cubits. He made refs of chain work as in the inner sanctuary and put them on top of the pillars. And he made 100 pomegranates and put them on the refs of chain work. Then he set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left. He called the name of the one on the right hand, Jochen, and the name of the one on the left, Boaz. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. That was First Kings 5 through 6 and first, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles 2 through 3, day 162.